Jujutsu Kaisen Phantom Parade is one of the few games that I feel like as a gacha game, it takes a little bit longer for them to release content in this game. So that's why you haven't really seen too many videos from me on it recently, because really all they have in the game right now is the story and they also have the events and the events have pretty much been the same thing over and over. Now I know they're working on new stuff. They have said that. And when that we got more information about that new stuff, I will talk about it. But for now we do have have two pretty hype characters that have come out at the same time. They are not on the same banner though. They are separated between two different banners and we also have a new residue on those banners as well. It is the same residue for both banners so it does not matter which character you pull on. You have the same chance of getting the residue on either character. Now personally I think she is going to be slightly better whereas he is not going to be quite as good and that seems to be what the JP players are thinking as well. So we're going to take a look at the tier list for the residue as well as the tier list for the characters and we're also going to go over the, what the residue does as well as the character kits and then I have one singular multi that I can do as a free to play player I will say as a free to play player on this game it is a very very rough I would not say this is necessarily a free to play player friendly game um when it comes to doing summons on like limited banners now they do have this banner that's here all the time where you can use tickets to summon on it and that banner is pretty nice but in terms of like actually getting new characters on these banners it's it's not the greatest okay so with all that said let's take a look at the residue and where it places on the tier list and what it can do as well as the characters where they place and what they can do so here in front of me, I have a list of the best residues. This is put together by JP players. And if you look for the soap bubbles one is what it's called. It is down here in S tier right here where my mouse is. Okay, so it's actually pretty decent. It's not one of the best of the best residues that you can get, but it, it might be something worth pulling for. So let's take a look at what it does here. So we'll scroll down to make sure we translate that. This is a website that is all in Japanese. It will be linked in the description below if you guys ever wanna know stuff about the characters and whatnot and if you want to know how to download the game you do have to have a vpn that will also be in the description for how to download the game and play the game okay so curse and soap bubble performance evaluation and usage when a command skill or special skill is activated it restores its own hp and spell power so it'll restore hp and spell power for the character that's pretty good and then the remnants that you want to equip the night moss and anatomy which consume a lot of magical power okay so basically it's saying ideally you equip this to these two characters here and it will help them out quite a bit and then three convex to increase the amount of recovery the slight gap can be increased by three convex which increases the amount of hp and curse power restored the regeneration of the spell power of the remembrance skill is precious so i want to prioritize convex residues i believe that means dupes okay so I could be wrong, correct me if I'm wrong in the comments. This is all translated, so it's a bit weird when it's translated sometimes, but the more dupes you put into it, the more HP it does, right, for healing. And then also, it increases your firepower at the start of battle. At the start of battle, you will receive a 15% increase in your technique. By combining it with the imagination skill, you can expect to increase that level of firepower. So basically it's going to give you HP and increase your damage is what it seems uh, like this residue does from my understanding. You know, if I'm wrong, let me know in the comments, correct me so everybody knows, right? This is all translated. So from the best of my understanding from this translation, that is what it looks like this residue does. Let's take a look at the characters. So this is the list of the current characters in Jujutsu Kaisen Phantom Parade, and we have Momo up here in double S tier, another double S tier character, whereas Kamo is down here in S tier. I apologize if I say the names wrong, that's just the way I know to say them, okay? so. That's how I'm saying them. But yeah, if you were going to pull on any banner, that means you are probably wanting to pull on her banner. But let's talk about their skills and talk about why. So these are Momo Nishinomiya's skills here. And you can see for upgrade priority, you want to prioritize upgrading skill two. Then you upgrade skill three, then the deadly, which is unusual. Usually the deadly is like number one and then skill one. OK, so it is recommended to give top priority to skill two, which is one of the most powerful enhancement skills of Nishinomiya. SSR Nishinomiya skills skill two is powerful in battles that requires crit as it can greatly enhance the performance of crit, which is pretty good. OK, and then if we go down a little bit further, 
we can read her individual skills. So Kazanagi is skill one, ranged attack, technique, 100% damage and damage taken, 15% increase. That's pretty good. So increase in by 15% damage and does 100% damage at a range technique. Skill two is called Tailwind, inflicts 41.7% increased damage to all allies. I don't know why it says inflicts, but you know, enhances allies by that amount. Um, gives their damage that much for two turns and 20% increase in break damage. That's insanely good. So I can see why you would upgrade the skill. That's at level one. At level 10, it's a 68.7% damage increased allies, which is really good. But the 20% break damage does not change. Okay. And then for skill three, it's called Reconnaissance. Grants a 30% increase in heart rate to all allies for two turns, grants 20% increase in damage to all allies for two turns, and grants a 30% decrease in heart resistance to all enemies for two turns. That's actually uh, pretty decent. I would say heart rate, uh, I believe, increases your crit rate a little bit, so that's pretty good. And then increase in damage for all allies, that's pretty good. It's just overall a very generally decent skill. And then if you get it to level 10, it just increases that percentage right there. It doesn't look like it really touches this percentage here, but it does increase the amount of damage dealt to 30% from 20% when you get it to level 10. So kind of worth upgrading that skill. And then for her deadly, kick it back. It is a special move. Damage of range attack technique, 420% to all enemies. So it's an attack all, that's pretty good. It has six hits in total. That's really good. And decreases special kill count by one and stun grant and it stuns oh okay yeah i can see why she's double s tier all that stuff is really really good so a really good support with an attack all ability that gives stun um damn damn that's actually pretty pretty dang good i would say overall and then we have the coordination effects down here so this is like when you use her uh deadly with another deadly gives a 20 percent increase in technique to the opponent who works with you okay that's uh pretty good 100% damage to the entire enemy with the ranged attack technique so that means if you use her attack all with another attack all yo you she that second attack all is going to be hitting pretty dang hard so overall Nishinomiya Momo looking absolutely insane let's take a look at Kamo so for Kamo Noriki his priority is still going to be skill two Okay, but then it's the deadly, then it's skill three, then it's skill one. So the increase per level is small, but it is recommended to prioritize strengthening the red scale movement of skill two, which increases the attack power of all skills. If you're using the special moves of Noriki Kamo SSR to use maximum firepower, you'll want to strengthen the special moves with high attack power as the runner up. Okay, Tiger Claw is his first move. It inflicts a 15% damage increase to yourself for three turns when you have 100% damage. Status of melee attack on the selected enemy. So not anything too crazy right there. Like just extra attack, you know, uh, on skill one. So I can see why you want to upgrade that first. Skill two is called Red Scale Dynamism, if I'm saying that correctly. And it gives yourself a 30% increase in body skills for three turns. Gives yourself a 25% increase in Jutsu for three turns. And grants Red Scale Movement for three turns. And grants five recovery of spell power every turn. So... Uh, yeah, a, a lot of good stuff going on there. Just a lot of enhancements for him that's going to make him better. And like they said, it's not a big percentage change going from level 1 to level 10. But as you upgrade it, it does make it slightly stronger, which is just going to make him stronger, right? So that's why you would want to upgrade that skill. Then we have Kagi here for skill 3. Ranged attack technique, 135% of damage to the selected enemy when in the state red scale movement. The skill changes 135% of damage of the ranged attack technique to the entire enemy. So this is what I'm talking about once again with translations being weird. I believe it's an attack all does 135% of damage to the uh, uh, selected enemy when you don't have him changed modes. But then this is a character that can change modes to red scale movement mode. And when you change modes, then it gets uh, then he hits the entire enemy team from my understanding. OK, that's how it seems like it's worded to me. Let me know if I'm wrong once again. And then we have a blood piercing special move. When the selected enemy has a ranged attack technique with 830% damage, red scale movement, the damage dealt is 30% extra, I believe. Uh, the technique damage is increased by 58.1%. Okay, so basically if you have red scale movement, which is once again the transformation, however that works, uh, you get extra damage essentially. 
And then down here at level 10, it becomes a massive amount of damage at 1,352.9% damage, which is pretty good. Coordination effect when he works with another person inflicts 10% damage to yourself and allied opponents uh, for two turns, 100% of damage to all enemies. Okay, I'm not sure exactly what that means, but basically I think it's just letting you do more damage to enemies, if I'm understanding that correctly, <laughs> but that's a little bit of a weird one. So if you know what that part means, let me know in the comments. I don't know everything. This is just from the translation, so this is just based on my understanding, right? But overall, obviously Momo seems like the far superior character in my opinion, so that is who I'm gonna be pulling for. So let's switch back over to the game and let's do our one summon and just pray and hope that we get her i mean the rates seem fairly decent in this game i will say that but ooh, uh, it would take a lot of luck to get her in one summon all right so like i said we have one summon i would not recommend somebody on this guy if you're free to play i would recommend somebody on her because she is in every way seems to be better right especially according to the jp players i trust what the jp players have said they haven't steered me wrong so far with the characters i have gotten they have been very good for the characters i've used that they have recommended so with that said oh boy Ooh, our one summon uh wish me luck guys if you are pulling on this banner i wish you luck as well Ooh, let's freaking do this Let, let's go come on the band-aid is ripped off we have click summon no Gojo at the start, so no guaranteed. No Black Flash either. Oh no. Okay, the one summon. It was a lot to expect anything from one summon. I don't think we're getting anything. I did not. I don't think I saw an SSR there anywhere. Yeah, I didn't see an SSR there anywhere, so. Oh, uh, no residue. No character. Unless somehow we get faked out along the way, but I think that's. Yeah, it's said and done for us, guys. We aren't getting anything on this summon. Oh man, I was really hoping, but like realistically, it, it's just, it's not going to happen. So we'll skip the rest of these, but yeah, uh, those are the characters. Hopefully that helps you out in determining who you're going to summon for. And if you guys did enjoy the video, please consider going down there, hitting that like button, hitting that subscribe button. And thank you guys so much for watching. Peace.